Hello there, it's Jamie J. I am the CEO and founder of Bottleneck Distant Assistance and the host of Live with Bottleneck. We have Gordon McDougall back on today, excited to chat with him. Uh, so get ready. If you have some questions, get ready to roll them out. Ask them here, whether you're watching on YouTube, LinkedIn Live, or Facebook. If you are watching on Facebook, go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook and just say, yes, it's okay. Uh, you'll have to go there to, to be able to comment if you want the comment sections to show up on the live stream here. And I'd be happy to uh, forward those questions along to Gord so he can answer them here. If you're watching this in a replay and you want to ask a question, just ask a question in the comment section and I'll get back to you or forward those on to Gord and make those introductions, whatever we need to do uh, to get you sorted there. So let's go ahead and jump into this thing. We'll get the, uh, the intro going here and we'll see you back here to... Get this thing started in 38 seconds. Well, hello there. My name is Jamie J. I'm the host of Live with Bottleneck, where we help stop the bottleneck in your business and life. I'm also the CEO, shareholder, and founder of Bottleneck Distant Assistance, and the author of Quit Repeating Yourself. I think it's right there. We can mirrored copy somewhere in there. <laughs> and what do you think of the new custom colored mic? I got it to match the bottleneck colors. See, you got the bottleneck light blue, the bottleneck dark blue, and our bottleneck orange, nice accent color. Love to hear what you think. It's the Shure MV7. I absolutely love this uh, for uh, any kind of podcasting or anything you're going to be doing. It's a nice dynamic mic. Uh, love, love, love this thing. So if you have any questions about that, ask away. Without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get to the get started in the show today. Um, and we're going to be talking to Gordon McDougall. Uh, if you watched us, we were just on um, a week or two ago, and he is the CEO of Tezzy Advisory. And we're going to be talking small business owner, lifestyle business, or building for scale. And it's going to be a fun uh, conversation. And just so that you, in case you missed it last time, uh, Gord as a stockbroker in the 1980s, Gordon learned about the world of companies and finances, and then a friend approached him with the idea of starting a company. 30 some odd years later, and after several startups, reorganization, and a lot of fundraising, he loves being an entrepreneur and coaching entrepreneurs. And I am just super proud and blessed to uh, have uh, worked with Gord and, and just I, he's just amazing, absolutely amazing. So get ready. You're going to learn a lot today about this conversation. So without any further ado, uh, let me introduce you to Gordon McDougall. How are you, sir? Good, and and uh, good to see you again, Jamie. Yeah, this is fantastic. We're going to have a lot of fun. Now, we were going to queue up the PowerPoint today, but for some reason, security's not letting me do it in this so software, so I will get this going. But I wanted to kind of have a great conversation with you today about kind of like who you are, uh, what you're up to, um, and then we can dive into uh, the topics uh, of small business owner, lifestyle business, or building for scale. Like what does someone want to do with their life and their profession? I think it's a great conversation to have. And it's one I don't think a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of business people have, Jamie. So I'm excited to maybe act as a bit of a catalyst for people to be able to think about that, this sort of thing. Yeah, you were just on the on the show, but can you give everybody a little bit of your background? Uh, absolutely, Jimmy. The uh, the short, shortest version I, I know how to do is I was a stockbroker back in the 1980s. Uh, that was very successful for me in most respects. But there was something missing. And one day a friend of mine walked in, in my office and said, I've got this idea to start a business. And by that time, I gained a lot of experience around the areas of capital markets, stock markets, raising capital and all that sort of stuff. And so we started a business back in the 1980s. It was what would today be called artificial intelligence. Back then, it was called expert systems. 
for the next 25 or so years, I actually worked and lived in uh, Los Angeles, New York, San Diego, um, either as a founder or co-founder of several different businesses in all sorts of different, different types of businesses. Five years ago, I moved back to Canada and I decided what I want to do with all of this experience and skills and, and knowledge that I have was to actually help other entrepreneurs grow their businesses. Uh, and I'll just use one quick example. I joined a small e-commerce business that's got uh, internet of things technology. In other words, things that run off your phone. And we, the business was in some serious trouble on a number of different fronts. Um, and over the very short period of time, over about four or five months, we actually reorganized the business, got it first capital raise underway, raised about a million and a half dollars. And today that business has gone from uh, being kind of upside down to uh, uh, we've got about 160 employees in five different countries. Our products are sold uh, globally. We're in 70 different countries where we sell products and the company's been, become very, very successful. Uh, we've So far we've raised about $40 million to fund the company's growth. Mm -hmm. And I suspect we'll do one more round of probably 100 or $150 million. That's and uh, that's that's a big story, Jamie. It's it, it it makes it sound as if like that's the only thing I do. I also work a lot with smaller companies uh, that want to get to the next level, and help them figure out their path, their strategy, their capital requirements. And the way I work is I work with uh, directly either with directly just with the CEO or mainly with the CEO, or with the entire C team. The executive team, ownership team, and help them figure out a path forward to grow a business to the next level. That's that's sort of me in a nutshell. And I, I love doing this. Oh, I should add one more quick thing. Uh, for the last 20 years, I got deeply involved in the personal development coaching, uh, um, um, personal development coaching. And so I've been trained as a life coach, a business coach, an executive coach, a team coach. And so those skills actually um, play a big role in, in the work that I do because there's a lot of, of coaching that goes into this and it's good to have some of the skills or maybe a lot of the skills around coaching. So that's what I'm up to. Yeah. You, you have a lot going on. Uh, and you know what, one of the things that I, I like uh, about you is your approach. Uh, you're so, you, you love business. You love building business. I, I, and I'm not putting words in your mouth, hopefully, but this is my <laughs> observation is that I, I see you light up when I tell you about some of the challenges we're going through right now and what we want to do. You just go, yeah, just, uh, you know, and it's, it makes, it makes me feel good as the CEO. And, and the reason I'm bringing this up is sometimes people that start these companies and grow these companies and, and ultimately want to build them uh, maybe to exit or whatever that is. Um, but in order to realize whatever success means to a business owner, an entrepreneur, a builder of businesses, um, that can be lonely at times. And it's really challenging uh, being the, you know, the buck stops here, so to speak. Yeah, you, you touch on a really, like, a, a, an incredibly important <clears throat> uh, topic or subject, Jamie. And that's one of the, the things I love about the work that I do. Being the founder of a, of a business, whether it's small, small and growing, uh, or at some other level of development, it is actually very lonely, and especially in one particular perspective. And that perspective is that you have to be really thoughtful and careful about your messaging, your messaging to your employees, your, your messaging to your suppliers, your messaging to your bank, uh, your message to your, your life partner, your wife or, or your significant other. And so there's there's this need to be uh, to hold back or not be able to be transparent and really open and vulnerable. And that's one of the roles that, that I like that I play and love to play is creating this really safe space for an entrepreneur to to share his or her deepest fears, their concerns, their worries, their um, the, the innermost thoughts that they can't share candidly and very transparent and openly and it, it, it for for them it's 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 like this it's like not only a release it's also gives them an opportunity to to 
to actually be in a, in a space of complete honesty at whether things are going super well. And that's a challenge because going really well can be a challenge. Things are not going well, and that's a challenge. But it's kind of like that old adage uh, for computers, garbage in, garbage out. So when an entrepreneur can be completely open and straight and, and transparent and vulnerable, it's really good data, not just for me to help them, but it's also really good data for them because they, they actually get a chance to work on whatever it is they need to work on in a way where it's, it, it, there's some real truth to it. There's some real uh, solid data. It's not just truth about not lying. It's truth about the data they're working with. It's a, it's the data they're missing. It's the, um, inputs and outputs. So I, I, you, you brought up one of my favorite topics and thank you for doing it. Cause I, I, I really have an enormous amount of empathy for, for entrepreneurs and love to see what happens when they can be open and vulnerable. It's, it's phenomenal. It's you, you just, and, and thank you for kind of elaborating on that because I will tell you, and, and I, I, we've probably had this discussion before, but I think it's worth noting again, uh, and, and for those of you that are out there kind of on the edge of whether or not seeking uh, some guidance or some support or, or coaching uh, from Gord here, it, it, it was so hard for me when I approached a friend, but also CFO, to help us get our books in order. Uh, that was a big deal because now I'm letting someone see the ugly truth of what the chaos of you know the business and the state of the business is in and it's so nice when you're out there and you know, oh you're dancing around you've got the nice you know website going and no but you know people don't see internally and for me to open that up was kind of like opening up my here here's my life here's my story here's here's yep. the ugly truth yep. Yep. of what i've been kind of sugarcoating a little bit right and that was dang scary it was really scary and embarrassing just to put it out there it was, i was embarrassed well there's there's so much about there's so much about uh managing and, and growing a business that's that's um so so one of the ways i put this um jamie there's every business, and I think this is true for every business. It's like a, it, it, there's an analogy here for like a, a, a theater production. And what, the reason I bring that up is so there's what happens behind the curtain, you know, and sometimes it's chaos and things going wrong and all sorts of things being managed in the background. And then there's the, in front of the stage or in front of the curtain, the, the performance that the audience sees. And that's, that's that, 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 the wall or that that thing that I love being able to to um, give the entrepreneur a chance to say, oh, okay, out here things look great. Sales are growing, margins are growing, lots of things going right. Oh, and by the way, my books, well, you know, they're a mess, and I'm really managing this this business out of a you know two shoe boxes. I've got the box with the receipts for what needs to be paid, and the box of where money's coming in, like whatever it is, right? Yeah, and so a chance to have that really open conversation allows them to also start figuring out the things they need to do to make the business operate the way they want it to operate. Yes, absolutely. So I I'm going to take a little side side note here because I was unable to share the slides, but there's basically three kinds of businesses: the yep. small business, the larger lifestyle business, and the businesses that scale. Why is it important to know what kind of business owner we are or want to be? Well, it, it, at the very core of it, Jamie, um, it, and it, this is probably this might be a bad analogy, but baseball is a game of individuals played as a team. Basketball is a game played as a team, and other sports, they're like like bowling, individual game, and there's tennis individual game there's a ton of different in, you know analogies or ways to ways to sort of open this conversation and the reason i think this conversation is is so important is for a business person or entrepreneur to figure out what what game they want to play and what game they're good at and what game will give bring them fulfillment not just in the business but in their life you know overall 
I've had this conversation, Jamie, with, um, I don't think I'd be exaggerating if I said hundreds of entrepreneurs. <clears throat> and right before my eyes, I've seen them go like, oh, I thought I was playing this game which really doesn't appeal to me or it doesn't suit my skill set or the business that I'm wanting to do. I should be playing this game. Uh, and, and so when they make that switch, now they're, now they're doing something that lines up with, with what their real abilities and talents and resources and, you know, 10 other criteria all match up with. And I think it also, most importantly, Gives gives them the likelihood, the the potential to have fulfillment in their in their work, and quite frankly, where do we spend most of our time? We spend most of our time working on our work, and so my goal is for entrepreneurs and business people to be fulfilled in their work. Of course, for it to be successful, big part of the equation. It's also so they're actually really fulfilled in doing the thing that they have passion for and that they love getting up in the morning and and it, and it fits better. I can't agree I can't agree more. I I think one of the biggest challenges we have and I think this is probably one of the main reasons why businesses fail so many times. Uh you'll never see a business plan fail on paper, but <laughs> when they actually get into business, uh it happens quite a bit actually. And I think it's because of what you just said, the passion um, needs to be there because no matter what we do as business owners, business leaders, entrepreneurs, business creators, whatever you want to call us, yep. uh, whether it's a big, large business, a medium sized business or a small business, a hundred percent of the time, we're not going to be happy. However, because we're not happy is because we're, f if, because we're sometimes doing stuff that we really don't want to do that doesn't frankly give us energy. And if I can break that down to 25% mud work is what I call it. And 75% is awesome work. I go through the mud because I know I'm going to be rewarded by talking to Gord. Like this gives me a ton of energy doing stuff like this. Um, learning from you and, and having those conversations. Every time we walk away from a conversation, by the way, Gordon, I'll just share this with everybody. I feel so much better. I run to my wife and I said, you got to hear this amazing conversation I have with Gord and da, 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 you know, and I get excited. <laughs> That's what I love. That's what I'm passionate about. So when I'm doing stuff like talking with the lawyer or you know, I'm forcing myself to go into my QuickBooks, you know, by the way, I only have to click on three buttons to get to where I can see my health of my company, which is really awesome. <laughs> but if I ever have to go and search for reports, I'm just like, ugh. You know, I know that if I'm doing that, it's because I'm preparing myself to maybe go have a conversation with Gord, right? Where I get rewarded or whatever that case may be. And so that I, I, I wanted to kind of share that narrative with you because I think it's really important that people find something they're truly passionate about because no matter what kind of business they get into, you're still going to have to go through some mud no matter what. Absolutely. Um, and I just like to prepare people for that. It's not all pink elephants and lemonade, right? <laughs> oh, it's, uh, I've often described being an entrepreneur as uh, um, hours of boredom punctuated by moments of terror. <laughs> hours of boredom? What was that? Punctuated by moments of terror. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you nailed that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, well, well, I I want to. I have another question. So, when we talk about the small business, the yep. larger lifestyle business, um, the businesses that are built to scale, what is it that? How does someone know where they want to be? Uh, simple as it sounds, Jamie. I think it starts with a conversation like this. Uh, I don't think this is you know when you, when you look around the landscape of resources for for entrepreneurs um there's thousands of books there's thousands of hours of videos there's thousands of gurus um you know to talk about marketing financing find your market crossing the chasm all amazing resources by the way and this conversation is more at the core of what a person's actually like a, a, a the intersection of abilities and 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 desires 
it's at a really core level. And when you figure that part out, then you're playing the game. And I don't mean a game in a light sense, like as if this is just ha ha funny, this is a serious game. Then you're playing the game that suits your skills, suits your resources. And so I, I think the chances of winning in that game go up dramatically, not only from a financial perspective, but also from the perspective of enjoying the business. And, and um, you know that old saying, but whistling on your way to work instead of whistling on your way from work. Oh, I like that. Getting excited, go in for the day. Can't wait to get out of it. Oh, see, I enjoy it. I, I do. I, I, I get up a little bit later than most people. I don't start my day until eight o'clock. My wife has already ran a marathon probably by then. <laughs> um, but I love it. I really do. Like I go in, I make my commute to the uh, coffee machine. I get my coffee, make my commute back into my little uh, uh, bedroom converted into an office, converted into a studio. And I get the day going. And my day consists mostly of talking with people like you and just having fun, figuring out different ways of building, scaling, doing all of that. It's freaking a blast. I and absolutely your, and, love and it. it. And in your business, Jamie, one of the points of satisfaction we've talked about is that you help other entrepreneurs, other business people have a, a better work experience and better productivity and for their business to operate more successfully and smoother. And I know you get feedback from those folks on a reasonably regular basis saying, thank you. My business is running better. My, my work-life balance is better. I'm making more money. The business is growing. You know, several positive things are going on. And I suspect besides the fact that it's a very successful business, which I'm not making light of, Jamie, I think you've built an amazing business. I got to think that a big part of that is when you hear a story from someone where it's made a big impact in their world, a big positive impact, that just takes your endorphins whoom, way up. You, yes, I, that I didn't realize I got into this business like most people do. Why do you get into business to create whatever form success means to you? For me, I got into it. I figured I'd make, I'd make some good money. <laughs> that's why I started my business, business, success, money, whatever. For me, that's what I got into it. And you just nailed it. It was not until I heard the response of a, or a story from somebody that we had impacted their life, not only their business, but their life and impacted their family in a positive way. It was like a light went off. A, my brain exploded. I was like, that's what I'm like. That's what I love. <laughs> like that, that blows door money. Of course. Nice. It has to be there. We all, let, but that emotional impact that was realized that day completely changed my perspective on business. I hope everybody that's in business gets an opportunity to realize something like that. Um, that is way more important to me than any any money matter anything financial and i think that's true for the bulk of entrepreneurs <clears throat> jamie i mean there's obviously entrepreneurs that are and this may sound really cold <clears throat> are in it for the buck uh my experience has been that the vast majority of entrepreneurs are in this because it has some positive impacts in in some other aspect of society so it sounds a little artsy <clears throat> Uh, a little as my wife would call it, wavy gravy. But it's also, I think it's also very true. I agree. I agree. So um, you, you, um, I, I love this author, John Warlow. Yep. He's, he's amazing. Um, I converted our hourly rate business into a subscription-based business based on his book, The Automatic Customer. Um, I, I'm a big fan of him. And I see you're a big fan of Built to Sell. Why do you like that book, Built to Sell? Uh, it's another big big topic, uh, Jamie, and I'll just I'll just touch on it briefly here. That book, Built to Sell, it's, it's about a three to five hour read for most people. And it's a complete game changer. Uh, it talks about how you take a business from being um, a serious hobby, 
uh, and that's not necessarily ne like meant to be as negative as it sounds, but being a serious hobby to being a, a business that can be sold at some point. And the idea of it going from A to B, from from wherever you are to selling the business is part of, part of the equation. But the big part of the equation is how Built to Sell talks about how you systematize, how you organize, how you find your, your true customers and the right product mix for those customers, product or service mix for those customers. And it does it in such a straightforward way. It's, it's uh, of all the book, business books I've read, it's like top three. It's one of the wow. top three. It, it's something I believe every business person should read. Well, then I'm, I'm going to have to get another book. <laughs> <laughs> well, pl please do. And, yeah. and, the, and, and on top of that, it's a fun read. It's actually told in a storytelling way. It's not, it's not a dry academic book. It's, oh, told, see, it, I love it. It, it's told through the author's personal experience of having a business that was struggling. And then he went through this process with, with I think three mentors and the, and the mentors show up in the book. See, so, so you hear the, you actually hear or read the interaction between him and these, these three mentors and the different guidance he got and the different ex, um, knowledge he gained through working with these, with these through me, three mentors. <clears throat> and so you're, you're actually following him through this journey, this journey that actually happened to him and all the lessons and all of the uh, amazing information that's, that's encompassed in that. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to read that one. That one sounds like a lot of fun. It's a great read. And so, I'll, go ahead. Oh, I was, well, I, I just kind of piggybacking on that. Um, I am interested in entrepreneurism very much so. And so I get to, I get to talk to a lot of people. Um, I've done over 800 episodes of, of podcasts and live streams. So I've got a chance to meet a lot of different people and everybody has some, some, uh, different ways of creating business and looking back on them. But people are so excited when they build a business that they're able to exit from and build a business that doesn't run them they run the business. Uh, and instead of creating a job for themselves, they create a business for themselves. And I'm curious to know what you think, what, what that means to you and what we as entrepreneurs, struggling entrepreneurs, um, trying to figure our, our way here, what's something we, that, that you might be able to uh, share with us to say, hey, this is kind of the things that you need to get ready in order to put you in that position or what can we expect? Um, there's nothing that I could say, Jamie, that would in any wouldn't be nearly as powerful as um, pushing pushing this book. By the way, I get no royalties. I don't get a commission for pushing the book. I, there's no financial gain for me. Read the damn book, you know, and and get your business in a process like Built to Sell talks about. Whether you're in a service business or whether you're in a, a product business, whatever business you're in, and it talks about how you identify the right match between customers and what your business does. And it does it in a way that takes it like six, 10 layers deep. And I think that's one of the keys is get that, get that mix just right. Like I think in your business, Jamie, you've got it do completely dialed in. You know who your customers are, you know, who benefits from your service, you know, and there's a broad range from sm very, sm you know, small business entrepreneurs, through to enterprise, you know who your audience is. And you also, just as importantly, know what kind of service you want to, you, you should provide that matches up with those right customers. And one of the magic things that happens in that you can actually make margin. Hmm. One of the things in built to sell talks about it extensively is if you're trying to be kind of all things to all people, it's going to be very hard to have a profitable business because every, well, not everything, but a lot of the things you're doing are custom. They're one-offs and there's a lot of upfront costs in one-offs and customized, customized work. Whereas in built to sell, it talks extensively about having these processes and the right product at the right time that you can deliver in a cost-effective profitable way. See that that's hugely important. And it's pricing is right there. And how are you going to make sure that you price things um, accordingly? Not so much that it's going to, 
you know, push people away, but that brings them in there, makes it a, you know, that, that there's so much that goes into this stuff. And that's why I'm so blessed to, to uh, know you and learn from you. <laughs> and I think I, I really think more people need to experience that with you. How, how do people get in touch with you? Email is the best way. Absolutely. Email. And that is Gordon. Oh, thank you. Yes, that's it. McDougal at TeziaAdvisory.com. So tell us about Tezia. Tezi uh, Advisory. Uh, yeah, Tezi, Tezi Advisory is a bit of a misnomer in some ways. Um, the word Tezi is actually, um, it's, the word Tezi is actually in five or six different languages is the word for speed. <clears throat> and that's why I call it Tezi Advisory because I like to move fast. And I think business needs to move fast. Not sloppy fast, but it needs to move fast. And so I started Tesi Advisory about 18 or 19 years ago. And what I do is two things. I actually work deeply in a company, only one or two companies at a time. I work with the CEO and the C team, and we develop everything around the business, the financing strategy, the capital raising strategy, the strategy for the business. We work on every aspect of the business and I'm actually on the team in, in, in the room making decisions on every aspect of the business. I mean, not to take it too far, I don't get involved in conversations about whether we should use blue or yellow paper clips. That's not where I spend my time. But when you look at things like how to do things like dial in your, your, who your customer is, dial in your strategy, dial in your marketing, dial in your capital raising if you're going to raise capital for the business uh f putting the right right people in the right seats i spent a lot of time working with 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 uh, c teams on having the right people in the right seats because many times companies have the wrong people in the wrong seats or they don't have anybody in a particular seat where they where they need them mm. so that's that's a little thumbnail about what i love to do the other part of my time jamie i spend having um typically if we're going to engage in a in a formal business relationship we'll have a setup where i'll work with an entrepreneur for three or four months two or three months and it's one hour per week so we have four conversations a month i charge for those services and i help them work through whatever they need to work through from from top to bottom that's fantastic. And, and they can learn more by simply going to gord.mcdougall at tezzyadvisory.com. Yeah, send me an email, uh, you know, to have a quick conversation, Jamie, to see if there's a fit or not a fit is something I do uh, day in and day out. And I love having those conversations. Well, uh, Gord, thank you so much. Is there anything else you would like to say before we wrap? Um, no, are we going to talk about the three kinds of entrepreneurs? Heck, let's do, yeah, of course. Let's what are the three kinds of entrepreneurs? Let's talk about that. So this this came to me. I, I wish I, I wish I could claim, Jamie, that this was a, a um, something I thought of. But I came across this about 10 years ago. And someone, was, someone shared this with me, what I'm about to share with you and the, and the audience here. And the sharing was that there are three kinds of entrepreneurs. Now, before everybody goes... Ah, there's 500 times or 5,000 or 5 million. Abs that's, absolute, that's also absolutely true. But what this exercise does is it actually breaks it into, into three different buckets or categories. So the best way to do it is just, so now that I've apologized that, and acknowledged the fact that there are hundreds and thousands and millions of different kinds of entrepreneurs because we're all different as human beings, hopefully I've got that out of the way. So that's not what this is about. This is about three big categories or three categories. And the intention of this exercise isn't to in the moment necessarily come to the answer about what kind of an entrepreneur uh, a person is. It's to create a thought process so they actually can take that away and th think about that in a serious way and start to figure out w where they want to be in this mix. So it, it's it's very much a, a meant to be a thought provoking exercise. I don't think I could talk to an, an individual for fifteen or twenty minutes and say, "Oh, you're that kind of entrepreneur." I, I, I think that would be uh, an outrageous thing to even think about doing. But this starts a this starts a thought process. 
so there's the three kinds. Of, oh yeah, of, sure, sure, sure. Let me let me rip at it if you don't mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So essentially, there's three kinds of entrepreneurs. There's, there's a small business entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and in general terms, that's a, that's a a one or two person entrepreneur, a, one person or two people that, that have or start a business. Typically, the businesses are under a million dollars in revenues on an annual basis. Not always, but usually. Second category is what I refer to as a, as a larger lifestyle business. They have a, maybe they've got a, a bigger boat, a fancier house, and it's, it's a larger business. And that could be, to put it in some sort of context, that could be a business that's anywhere from sort of two to $20 million, $30 million in size. And the third, third category is scale. And it's, you know, not hard to find examples of businesses that have scaled. You've got Apple, Facebook, Google. I mean, those are scale at an enormous size. But there's also businesses that scale and get to 25, 50, $100 million in size. It's, it's actually when you look at the statistics or the numbers, it's amazing how many businesses actually get to that size just in the U.S. So those are the three categories, small business, lar larger business, lifestyle, and scale. So the question then is, which one of those businesses do you want to be a part of? That's the question you end up with. So let me, let me break them down a little bit, Jamie. So the small business uh, could be anywhere from someone that's got uh, uh, a restaurant or a couple of restaurants or they've got a very specialized service or product offering. And the attributes for that business are that one or two people, not always, but typically one or two people control every aspect of the business. So they don't have to report to anybody else. They do what they want to do, when they want to do it, how they want to do it. And they don't have to listen to anybody else's opinions or perspectives or nothing. The second category of business is, is being the larger lifestyle business. It, it's typically a team, you know, and it can be five people. It can be 20 people, but there's a team. So now you have a more complex management structure. You'll typically have a board of directors. You'll have more capital involved. It takes typically more money, more, more, more startup and ongoing capital raises to grow that larger business. So you've got a more complex financial and financing structure. It's a more complex business that, that takes into consideration a lot more moving pieces. And of course, the last one is scale. Mm -hmm. uh, and scale is what I would characterize as being a very complex capital structure. I mean, you, if you look at some of the financings for a company that's scaled, they'll do a seed round. They'll do a, what's called a series A. They'll do a series B, a series D, go public, get venture capital, get private equity involved. I mean, now you've got a really, they'll use more aggressive bank financing, way more complicated capital structure and capital management. And then of course the manager of the business like the business that I'm involved in, we've now got, you know, 150 people in five countries. So you need lots of systems. You need lots of processes. You need lots of, lots of more complex. There's a lot more complexity. And then of course, to grow that business to scale takes, takes typically a lot more capital and it takes a lot of, of energy going into building a bigger business, a bit bigger business. But those are the three buckets. Hopefully I've done a decent job of sort of differentiating them. Yep. Yeah, it's it's really neat. So you get to look at it. What like what do you want to do? A lot of people don't want to build the next Google, right? A lot of people just want to have their own little uh their own little store and they're they're happy as all get out. Um I I think I think I'm kind of in the larger lifestyle bracket there for me. That's what kind of gets my juices going. It is kind of nice to create something from nothing, but build it up and be able to put ourselves in a position one day to exit. 
And and I just love that. I love the team aspect. I think that's a lot of fun. And I think a lot of people that we talk to, they're kind of in that 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 same area. There, uh, it, at least a lot of the people that I that I'm talking with, that I've developed friendships with, is they. I, I think we all we kind of start sticking together. You know. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I, and I think and a big part of this conversation for me, and the reason I love having this conversation, Jamie. <clears throat> whether it's uh, one-on-one with with uh, some of us as much fun to have, talk with as you, um, whether it's in a um, a presentation uh, like the, like this is this is a really fun exercise to do in a in a group of uh, 100 or 200 people. Boy, does that spark a lot of conversation! And is there ever massive confusion in the room? There's massive confusion for a while, and next thing you know, you've got people coming up and you know speaking at, at a mic that's in the room, and they'll start telling their story. Well. I think I'm this kind of on a friend. They start to explain and rationalize. The intention here isn't to put people in boxes, Jamie. The, the last thing I ever want to do is not to put him or her in a box. Because businesses also evolve. Start off as a, as a small business, might go a year or two or five years and go, huh, I've grown in my skills and abilities. I want to take this to the next level. And it might be, to go to the level of being a larger lifestyle business, and you're a great example. Is I'm I'm curious to see what your path brings you because you're still a, you're still a young man. Yeah. <laughs> or one day you wake up and go like, wow, I've I've now built all of this, you know, and now it's a larger lifestyle business. I think I'm going to go for scale, and and I, and I want to. The most important question in this mix is what two things. One is what do I want to do. Or what does the team want to do? It's not always about us. It's, a, it's often almost always about a team. What do I and the team want to do? And the question that we're not honest with ourselves about is what are our skills and abilities? You know, and that's, 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 that, that can be a really tough conversation to have with yourself or with someone else. What am I really capable of? You know, I think that's probably the biggest one. Um, and we can't, Sometimes we don't know what we don't know. Oh, we often don't know what we don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, you, yes. Oftentimes we don't know what we don't know. So we we may think we're good at something, but we're not. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, like I may think I'm a good hockey player, but am I really? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of stuff that I think we have to deal with, and being able to identify where our weaknesses are, I think is maybe even more powerful than knowing and, what our strengths and, are and strengths too, Jamie, and be able to identify. Well, I was, I was kind of having a little, little laugh inside my head when you talked about that. When I was a kid growing up, I, my, my, my dream was to be a, a, a fighter pilot. Oh. My dream, I lived and breathed airplanes and I wanted to be a fighter pilot in the worst way. I actually went into cadet school so that that was a path towards becoming a fighter jet, um, uh, um, uh, you know, flying flying fighter jets. And then the the bikers they tested my eyesight. Turns out I got a depth perception problem. Oh no! <laughs> I go on like, and of course, wouldn't probably normally get tested for that, but but because I was headed in this particular direction, it was one of the criteria. And so they came back and said, I'm sorry, Gord, but you're probably not going to be a fighter pilot because if if you're looking to land an airplane and your depth perception's off, you have a problem, sir. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, so no. I use that as an example of, uh, you know, it's not directly on point here, Jamie, but it's, it's right. It's about, you know, somehow figuring out either growing your skills, growing your abilities, and, and that's, that's, I think every entrepreneur is growing in their skills and abilities and at times checking in with yourself and saying, here's, here's where I want this to go. I mean, and having a small business that provides the financial returns that you, that, that work for you, having a lifestyle business that provides the returns for you or having a scale business that provides the returns for you. Mm-hmm. It's about finding that equilibrium where you're satisfied. And I don't mean satisfied like, yeah, that's okay. Like that's actually something you're enjoying. There's a guy, there's a guy in Japan. My wife lived in Japan for six years. There's it, and I'm, I'm gonna go blank on his name here, but he runs this little um, 
sushi restaurant in the heart of Tokyo. And I think it's got six seats in it. It's, it's world famous. He's, wow. 80, he's 85 years old, you know, 80 to 85 years old. World famous chef. He could have a restaurant with uh, uh, hundreds of like he could he could franchise. I mean, he could just do a bunch of things. But it's pretty obvious without him ever saying it that he and by, oh, by the way, a, a meal is about uh, five hundred dollars U.S. And, and you're there for about mm, 27 minutes. Holy um, crap. <laughs> but it's the best sushi in the world. It's recognized as the best sushi. Never mind the world. In Japan now, Japan's sushi crazy. Wow. So my point, but my point of this, Jamie, is that it's it's a good example of a guy who really figured out what was important to him. Yeah, you know, he didn't want to go and make a bajillion dollars and have restaurants all over the world and have complex operating systems. He wanted to, he wanted to be the best sushi guy in the world and serve his. I mean, he probably serves thirty customers a day. 30 customers in the evening, maybe 50, no, probably 30. But he's happy when you that's see it. it. When you see it. it. Oh, yeah. When you see his, his, uh, his, uh, the documentary on him on, on Netflix, um, he's, he is the happiest guy in the whole world. Well, now I'm going to have to go find that documentary and watch that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I can't remember the name of it. If you look for famous sushi chefs, Netflix, you'll find the guy. Oh, man. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, I'll definitely have to look that up. You know, because it is all about doing being happy. We we have one go around. Yeah. One and actually, Jamie, here. not to make not to take away from your, your happiness comment, but it's really about being satisfied. Yeah. You know, having a sense of self-satisfaction. And why are human beings satisfied? Because they're doing something good in the world. They're doing something that that actually provides value in the world. And that does lead to happiness. And I'm not make, I'm not meaning to take away from the word happiness. Uh, happiness is important, but it's that really deep sense of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, and I think that's why many of us as entrepreneurs enjoy the process so much. We've created something that wasn't there before. Yep. Absolutely. And you get that satisfaction of like, wow something it's working <laughs> so so one last piece for me jamie and this is to all the folks who are watching this i'm going to challenge you to go away and think about in a serious way like really put some thought into it what what kind of an entrepreneur are you now doesn't mean you're not evolving in fact you most likely are evolving but right now are you a small business entrepreneur are you a lifestyle entrepreneur, bigger business, more com complicated, bigger size, or a scale entrepreneur? And it's 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 a challenge to your audience to say, which one are you? I like that. And, and so it's a it's a small, it's a larger kind of lifestyle, or it's just a business that scale. Yep, three boxes. Three categories. I'm going to pop that up on the screen real fast. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, I always love having a conversation. I know we're getting close to the end of the conversation. Is there anything else you want to throw into the mix? Just, I, I just want to say thank you. Um, you. You're amazing. I'm so blessed to know you. And thank you for sharing uh, your wealth of wisdom uh, with us and, I, I just, I, I can't wait for us to have another conversation. I just really look forward to them. Um, and uh, I just appreciate you uh, taking the time. This is, this is fantastic. Well, thank you. Thank you for those kind words, Jamie. You're going to make me blush here. And I'm already got kind of a red complexion. So when I blush, it looks really red. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really appreciate you having me on your, on your uh, live stream. Uh, for a variety of reasons. One, I, I, I love having conversations with you. I hope this brings value to us. And I know you said you've done 800 of these. Uh, you don't charge anything for them. You don't make any money off of these. Uh, you do this because you're a good guy and you want to bring some knowledge and information and resources into the world for, for business people. So thank you for doing that. Oh, thank you, Gord. Yeah, it, it, it's fun. It's satisfying. <laughs>
<laughs> well, thank you so much, Gord. Um, can you hang out just for a second while I wrap up? All right, one quick second here, and I'll go ahead and wrap up. Oh, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Gord is amazing. Um, and I cannot recommend enough to reach out to him. Send him an email, gord.mcdougal at tezzyadvisory.com. Reach out to him and say, hey, Jamie, Jamie asked me to reach out to you. Just say that, right? Get a chance to talk with Gord, talk about maybe some some challenges you may be having. Maybe there's some opportunities you want to explore and you just mm -hmm. kind of don't know what to do. Gord is the man for you. I cannot recommend him enough. He's amazing. He never makes me feel stupid or bad. And, and I'm doing a lot of things now. I never thought I would do in a million years. And right now, specifically, I have to credit Gord for giving me um, the, the confidence to move forward on a couple of things that I'm doing that I was really scared of doing. Um, so it's just a really, really nice way of, of reassuring yourself. And uh, while we as business leaders cannot maybe confide in our teams or in, in our spouse or, or something to the level that we need to confide in them, you can do that with Gord. Uh, so again, highly recommend reaching out to Gordon McDougall, the CEO of Tezzy Advisory. You can send him an email, gord.mcdougall at Tizzy. <clears throat> excuse me, tezzyadvisory.com. You can also check him out on LinkedIn and uh, he's also there on Twitter. So highly recommend checking it out. Thank you so much uh, for uh, tuning in today. If you want to get more videos like this, you can learn how to break through the bottleneck in your life and business today by going to bottleneck.online slash BTV. Um, if you get find us on YouTube, subscribe to us on YouTube and uh, new book is out. Quit repeating yourself how today's leaders are using systems and processes to grow their business the right way. The reason I say quit repeating yourself, I wrote this book with a lot of experience that I do here, and it basically explores the intersection of culture, leadership, systems, processes, recruiting, and hiring. Tell me where else you can find a book that covers those six areas. <laughs> you can find it anywhere books are sold. You can go to quitrepeatingyourself.com. And then, uh, if you missed earlier, um, I had a great conversation with Les Leslie Short. She's the founder and CEO of the Cavid Group. And she we talked a little bit about how to build and or expand an international business. But we really focused that conversation around a, a nice conversation on culture. That was a blast. So if you missed that one, coming soon to your earbuds, I'm going to be talking with Jordan Ross. He's the CEO of Eight Figure Agency, how to 10x the right way with systems, processes, management, and culture. You notice a trend here? <laughs> a lot of culture going on. Jordan is amazing. So be on the lookout for that episode. Um, and what a great follow. I've been talking today to Gordon McDougall, CEO of Tezzy Advisory. We talked about the small business owner, lifestyle business, or building for scale. So your homework for today is, which one are you? Which one are you right now? Think about that for a little bit and then reach out to Gordon. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, don't forget, create your own ripple. And uh, we'll talk to you all soon.